Hello and welcome to another Planet Destiny exotic weapon review. Today we're taking another look at the Red Death. A long time ago, this was one of the most feared pulse rifles with its ability to two-shot players in PvP, provided you land all crits. Over time though, it's been rebalanced into a slightly faster firing archetype. Let's get into the perks. For the muzzles, we have Accurized Ballistics, more range and impact, increased recoil. Field Choke, more range and impact, increased recoil. And finally, Aggressive Ballistics, more predictable recoil, enhanced impact, shorter range, and more recoil. Previously, Aggressive Ballistics was the only way to go for both PvP and PvE, but the most recent Pulse Rifle patch has changed things up a bit. In PvP, you might notice that using Aggressive Ballistics doesn't increase the damage as much as it used to. Long story short, it does increase the damage, but the displayed damage is rounded down. So a headshot with Field Choke Muzzle would be 30, and Aggressive Ballistics would be 30.2. That's just an example since I don't know the actual damage values. So which one should you choose? Well, it's a toss up right now. I really prefer the grouping pattern of Accurized Ballistics, but for some reason I just couldn't hit anything with it in PvP. Field Choke has almost perfectly vertical recoil, which is something I always look for in Pulse Rifles. It also has nearly identical damage to Aggressive Ballistics. Speaking of which, Aggressive Ballistics does reduce the range and also has more spread out grouping for the bursts. I ended up using Field Choke since it was the most consistent in recoil, had the highest range value, and upped the damage a bit from Accurized Ballistics. For the first perk, we have Unflinching. This is one of those nebulous perks that's unbelievably difficult to show. I did some testing during House of Wolves with it on snipers, and I still had difficulty seeing any actual changes. There have been a lot of threads on Crucible Playbook subreddit that delved even deeper into the math involved with this perk. The short story here is flinch is reduced by 33%, but the UI won't really show that much of a difference. You just kind of have to trust that it does reduce flinch. I'll get into why I think this perk was put onto the weapon in a bit. For now, let's look at the stat mod perks. First, we have Snapshot. Second is High Caliber Rounds. Finally, we have Single Point Sling. Switch weapons faster, move quicker while aiming. The choice here comes down to High Caliber Rounds or Single Point Sling. Snapshot doesn't add anything useful to the weapon, whereas High Caliber Rounds and Single Point Sling can enhance certain play styles. Take for instance High Caliber Rounds. These will stagger pretty much everything out there from normal enemies all the way up to some ultras. In PvP, they'll sometimes add much more kick to someone's reticle, making it harder to hit you. It can ensure that your damage and anyone else hitting that target will be able to land shots without taking damage yourselves. Single Point Sling is also a good alternative if you find yourself swapping weapons out a lot. Since I run either a sniper or sidearm for PvP for secondaries, I need to swap to them ASAP. This perk helps that along. The increased movement speed while aiming is pretty lackluster and won't be used in short firefights. It's really only noticeable if you're walking around for an extended period while aiming down sights. So for PvE, I highly recommend using high caliber rounds to help stagger your targets. For PvP, I personally prefer single point sling since it goes well with my playstyle. But high caliber rounds is also a good alternative if you find yourself losing one on one firefights. The final namesake perk is Red Death. Each kill heals you and speeds up reload. The heal from this perk is the reason this gun can even be considered exotic. The heal is immediate, it also allows you to continually slay enemies without caring for your health. The reload portion will take about half a second off the reload time, and the reload buff lasts for 5 seconds. It does not refresh if you're chain killing enemies though. It will run out, and then you have to kill something again to get the bonus. It's my belief that this gun was designed to be a tanking weapon for PvE. Unflinching keeps your crosshairs right where you want them to be when under fire. High caliber rounds will stagger your targets allowing you and your team to focus fire on the target you call out. The heal is there so you can quickly eliminate an enemy if your health is getting low. Red Death is still easily one of the strongest PvE weapons out there due to all of these reasons. I genuinely cannot remember dying the last time I was using this gun in a PvE activity that wasn't some sort of group wipe mechanic. If you're running an activity for the first time, like the raid, then Red Death is a good primary to take since you can keep your mind on learning the fights at hand. The only real bad thing about Red Death is that in PvE, you can also simply stay alive by playing smart. The healing mechanic can promote bad play by inflating your own hubris. Switching to another weapon may have you saying, wait, I usually don't die here. In raids, Red Death will also simply be outperformed by so many other exotics. Usually, I really want to save that slot for Black Spindle or some other weapon that will pack a large punch. At any given time outside of the raid, I would also massively prefer having an exotic sword over this pulse rifle, especially since the raid pulse rifle can roll with life support, which can heal you if you kill something while you're critically wounded. 
group play will also have adverse effects on the healing as well. Sometimes you will work an enemy down to the last hit, and then your teammate will down it with an auto rifle shot. You might have been really counting on that heal or the reload effect at least. The other exotic pulses can also be considered better for PvE. Bad Juju's damage bump, near infinite ammo, full auto, and super recharge sounds a hell of a lot better than a heal. No Time to Explain's literal infinite ammo, provided you land crits, and full auto is pretty amazing for some of the tankier enemies out there. Moving over to PvP, Red Death is actually in the same boat as Hawkmoon. On paper, and in the past, it should have been feared, but now it just feels like the gun isn't as accurate as it once was. I never see a person wielding Red Death and think, well, I better watch out for them. In a one-on-one -on -one gunfight, even though Red Death has high caliber rounds and unflinching, you'll be able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with him using pretty much any other primary, legendary, or exotic. The design to be a tanking weapon thing I talked about earlier really doesn't apply here in PvP. The heal is still a wonderful tool in PvP though. I've seen some players using Red Death almost as a secondary weapon, using a sniper as a primary and then switching to Red Death to finish off the target to grab a quick heal. Single Point Sling allows for this pretty powerful playstyle. It makes fighting multiple enemies back to back much easier. The heal does help you out with the numerous damage over time effects in the Crucible as well. An effect that could kill you will just bring you down low since you can get a quick heal in between ticks of damage. Still, even though Red Death is one of those weapons fantastic on paper, it just falls short a bit when using it in practice. I keep getting frustrated with my shots just not finishing off targets. Maybe I was just having a bad day with my aim when testing this, but reading around it feels like this view is shared amongst other people. The old Red Death with aggressive ballistics increasing the damage a meaningful amount made it extremely reliable in PvP but now it just lacks stopping power. If you took the heal away, you would be left with a pulse rifle that has some unwieldy recoil and no real perk choices. The cosmetics of this gun are unchanged. It still has the Guardian death counter on the side, the skull and crossbones ammo counter on top, and I've always been a fan of simple sights. The sound is also just crispy. Looking back on what Red Death once was is kind of depressing. It used to be one of the hallmarks of a risk versus reward weapon. Its lower rate of fire dealt huge amounts of damage, but if you missed a shot, then you would be punished for it. This is definitely one of the exotics that needs to be looked at so it can, at the very least, feel more exotic. Because right now, I would much rather take any other legendary pulse over this one into PvE or PvP. I hope you guys found this review helpful. This has been Patrick Casey with Planet Destiny. Your guide to the Destiny Universe.